Great day everyone! Welcome back to another episode of Clive's Conversation. Uh, for those who are new to us, we are a channel that uh, share more insights about health and wellness topics. Yeah, during our last episode, we spoke about the weight loss diets, such as keto diet, as well as Atkins diet. Yeah, shall we? You all come back our senior wellness consultant, Cadence, to share more with us. Let's welcome Cadence. Hi Cadence. Hi Yeah, Welcome back. Thank you. Yeah. So how was lunch? Fantastic, fantastic. Yes. And you know, just now uh, after we had the conversation about diet, yes. I was really much more conscious about uh, my, my lunch uh, options. And so I was trying to balance between uh, carbs as well as uh, uh, healthy fats. Lah. Yeah, so I hope you had a great lunch. I did, I did. Yeah. <laughs> so during the last episode, we spoke a lot about uh, a keto diet as well as Atkins diet. Yeah, and I also heard about the, uh, another kind of diet, which is called the paleo diet. Yes. Yeah, I'm sure you, uh, you should be quite a uh, well versed about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So for uh, paleo diet, I heard that it's uh, something related to caveman diet and uh, eating food that is, uh, people eat 10,000 years ago. I mean, I'm really very curious, how does it really work? Yeah. Right, so wait, see, do you know the word paleo comes from uh, paleolithic? So it's a Greek word and it stands for Old Stone Age. So that's how far the diet dates back to. Mm-hmm. So that was the point where our ancestors, they were hunter-gatherers. Right, they uh, ate whatever that they could find, you know, fruits from the trees, they hunted uh, animals and then they just uh, ate the animals and things like that, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's how uh, the whole origin came about. Mm-hmm. And uh, paleo diet in short emphasizes on uh, the intake of healthy, unprocessed foods. Okay, so there's this rule of thumb, as long as it's processed before in a factory, okay, it doesn't look like it's from the original source. Mm. Example, chicken nuggets versus uh, a chicken drumstick, mm. you know, so it becomes very obvious, right? Okay, what would be the paleo choices? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, besides uh, chicken nuggets and a chicken drumstick, is there anything we should really focus on and avoid? Right, so the primary objective for a paleo diet is to focus on healthy food intake, unprocessed food intake. Mm. Uh, what it restricts more is um, artificial fats like trans fat, margarine, oh. um, dairy products, mm. for example, uh, cheese, milk, and uh, all the processed, like uh, on the shelves, kind of like uh, biscuits, uh, cakes, confectionaries, and things like that. Mm. Yeah, so uh, I think a lot of people thought that it is a restriction of um, certain food groups, but actually, it is not. It encourages a healthy intake. Mm. It is just that uh, they encourage you to not have any uh, artificial flavorings, additives, and all that mm. that is, uh, you know, in your diet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Would it be difficult because uh, a lot of us, we usually eat out? And I think when we eat out, it's inevitable that you know we have such uh, artificial stuff. Uh, so how, how can we like, balance? I believe um, for paleo diet, for us to be 100% stringent, mm. honestly speaking, in Singapore context, very difficult. Mm. Why? Because maybe people would say, oh, um, since I can eat fruits and vegetables and uh, meat, maybe I can go to the Thai Peng store mm-hmm. and then I just order meat and vegetables but more often than not these are cooked in cheap vegetable oil mm-hmm. and that is one uh, aspect that is non-paleo oh. and another thing is the sugar that they could be cooking into the sauce mm-hmm. example your polo yolk oh. right they could be uh, adding in flour to thicken the sauce and mm-hmm. things like that so all these are already considered non-paleo uh, mm-hmm. yes so our ancestors as they were hunting and all that it is Honestly, if you think about it, not possible that they would have access to bihun, mm-hmm. kuei teow and things like that, right? So uh, those are the things that they, they would not eat. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but of course, if uh, we start on, uh, you know, ha- keeping this clean diet, mm-hmm. I believe one of the reasons uh, or one of the uh, effects that we would be able to see is that uh, the body starts to be able to function more healthily. Mm-hmm. We start to get increased energy levels. Mm-hmm. Okay, our appetite control is better as well because we don't uh, spike our blood sugar uh, up and down with the process of foods. Mm. Yeah, so yeah, good and bad. <laughs> but we definitely have to do some sacrifices uh, when we eating out. Yeah, I understand. Mm. Okay, it sounds like a very healthy uh, kind of diet. Mm-hmm. I mean, is there any side effects to such a diet? Mm, main side effect, yes, it's very expensive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do you know even for a uh, meat intake? For or let's say example you are taking uh, eggs uh, and you are on a paleo diet, what is encouraged is uh, you should always choose the organic and free-ranged version of these meats. 
So if you talk about uh, our country, mm. uh, you probably have to make a special trip to the organic uh, supermarket, mm. only buy imported frozen uh, meats mm. that can qualify for this because most of our uh, mass produced mm. meats, eggs, they are not considered uh, free range or hormone free mm -hmm. and that interrupts right with the paleolithic uh, ideology mm -hmm. because everything needs to be pure, it needs to be clean right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Not much of a health side effect if you ask me, but yeah, <laughs> for Consider our pocket, considerably uh, expensive. Yes, that's right. Ah, yeah, I see. I see. Uh, is there any chance of a weight rebound then? Right. So, um, people that experience uh weight loss mm -hmm. on a paleo diet usually it comes uh, long term. Means it's slow, mm -hmm. but it's steady. So as long as they uh, reap the health benefits and they um, experience all this uh, better like weight control, sugar control and they, they want to stay on it, right? Mm -hmm. um, if you ask me if the calories are kept in check, mm -hmm. it is not that uh, easy for the weight to come back. Mm -hmm. But of course, if they are a part-time paleo <laughs> diet uh, goer, yeah. so for example, Mondays to Fridays, they are on a good paleo diet, but Fridays and uh, Saturdays, Sundays is... Uh, processed foods, potato chips mm -hmm. and all that, uh, I do not think it would work. Mm -hmm. In fact, it could lead to a cycle of a binge eating. Mm -hmm. Yes, and uh, let's say if we overly consume such processed foods during the weekends and then we go back to a clean diet, mm -hmm. um, I think it would render the first five days of a clean diet uh, mm -hmm. completely useless. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think consistency is very important. And the most important thing is don't focus just on the weight loss. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, focus on how you are feeling overall. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And did I mention that uh, paleolithic diet? It helps in um, triglyceride control. It also helps in uh, blood pressure control. Mm. So there are many scientific studies that have uh, gone through for this, and uh, the uh, a lot of these papers claim, you know, that uh, the people that adopt this diet that experience a lot of these good health benefits. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So sounds like it's a slow and steady race. Uh. It is. It is. <laughs> yes. Uh. Okay. I also heard of another kind of a diet, uh, which is called intermittent fasting. I don't know if uh, that really does it really work. Right, um, wait a So intermittent fasting is not a diet, oh. it is more like a routine mm -hmm. or a lifestyle that we change. Okay. Yes, so um, the scientists actually studied our genes and they realised, right, so, so since just now we are talking about uh, our ancestors and they ate, um, you think about it, when they hunted for food, mm -hmm. there can be days where they went without food because there was no modern day refrigeration. Mm -hmm. They might have gone on days without hunting anything, mm -hmm. so they would have gone hungry. Mm -hmm. But because of this, when they did uh, autopsies on all the older uh, bodies that they found, they realised that there is very little uh, of them in the population that has obesity issues, heart conditions and uh, stroke and all that. And that's when they realised, oh maybe genetically we are designed to um, eat for a certain amount of time and then stop eating. Mm. Uh, we are designed to fast for certain periods. Mm. So that's how intermittent uh, fasting came about. Uh, so the word intermittent means like uh, there will be uh, time periods where you fast mm. and sometimes per periods where you don't. Mm. But there are several types. So some people uh, when they adopt uh, intermittent fasting, they go through this we call a 16 uh, slash uh, uh, 8 kind of uh, uh, hour which means that they eat everything they want within an 8 hour period and then the remaining 16 hours they fast they only drink water right and some of them uh, do this cyclic intermittent fasting which is um, every week for 1 to 2 days they do not eat anything for 24 hours wow. that is considered intermittent uh, fasting as well okay the effects are crazy a lot of effects uh, good effects um, and good benefits that uh, uh, the people that adopted this uh, lifestyle actually experienced. Yeah. So you can eat any amount of meals, as in like you can eat like five meals as long as it's just within the eight hours. Well, it depends <laughs> on how strict you are okay. because um, the idea of intermittent fasting is you encourage your body to not raise the blood sugar as many times. Mm -hmm. Okay, when you raise the blood sugar as few times as possible, it actually helps to boost your metabolic rate. Mm -hmm. It helps to reduce the stress hormones. Mm -hmm. And uh, we know stress hormones like cortisol are the main culprits that instruct our fat cells to store more fat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so when we reduce that, then it's possible. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of people do think, yes, I can eat as and when I want, anytime I want within the eight hour period. But I still think that we should make it uh, something that's more fixed. Mm -hmm. Maybe two to three times mm -hmm. within the eight hour period. Mm -hmm. Because I think our body needs that uh, regularity as well. Right? Yes, exactly. Uh, 
Isn't there any health benefits behind that intermittent fasting? Well, I'm glad you asked that. If you do a simple Google search, okay, um, it helps uh, both men and women mm. with uh, anti-aging. Mm. Yes, why? Because uh, when we talk about um, doing intermittent fasting, many hours are spent on repairing ourselves, including our skin cells also. Mm. So we talk about anti-aging effect. Okay. Of course, not just the skin inside out. Okay, we can uh, do cancer prevention as well. Why? Because a lot of times, uh, scientists think that when we consume a lot of calories, it leads to uh, unnecessary production of free radicals as well. Yeah, and uh, definitely, uh, did I mention better weight uh, management? Yes, um, because um, of certain hormones that are being regulated, um, the body doesn't uh, have this tendency to store fat as easily also. Yeah, and of course, it encourages this process called autophagy, which is when the uh, cells do self-repair. Yeah, so the more hours you fast, the more hours your cells can rest, instead of focusing on digestion, they can do their self-repair, which eventually scientists think can lead to a longer lifespan. Yeah, so these are some of the effects. Have you personally tried this before? Yes, I have. Oh, yeah, wow. in fact, for uh, quite a period of time. Oh, how was the yeah. experience? It's uh, to be honest, for the start, it was quite challenging, right? Mm. Uh, food is always a stone throw away for Singapore, mm. right? You move, uh, you walk five hundred meters at the supermarket and things like that. But um, I think you would get used to it. The first one week is the hardest, mm. and then after that, you would sort of be used to not eating as late. Mm -hmm. Yes. I guess like what you mentioned, this is not really a diet per se, but it's more like a lifestyle. It is, it yeah. is. So when you ease into it, maybe it's really much easier. That's right. So let's say for example, people that are looking for sustainable uh, weight loss or they have certain uh, health issues, if they pair intermittent fasting with a appropriate and sensible diet, for example, the paleo diet, they might be able to see results even faster. So that pairing is actually very good. Yes, yes that's right. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Cadence, uh, once again for the very detailed explanation on the various uh, routine and diets. So stay tuned uh, for our future episodes on uh, other kinds of uh, health-related topics. So please uh, like, share and subscribe. See you the next round. Bye.